Hi, this is Ian and welcome to Irish Angling Adventures. So today we're going to be tying this, which is a small flat wing. Um, this is going to be a double feather flat wing, so it's just two feathers tied off the back. Um, obviously you can tie with less or more. Um, these are really nice sandy limitation, um, or even a general bait fish imitation. So they have quite a bulky head, um, which will help kind of break and push water in front of the fly. Um, behind then it's going to have a little bit of a wake, um, so it'll create turbulence and help to get this tail moving around. Um, and kicking basically in the current um, or under retrieve. Um, so it's a, a nice simple fly. There really isn't too much to it. It takes a little bit of practice getting the proportions right um, and kind of figuring out what you like um, and how much material to put in where, kind of wear and fly. Um, but after finding a couple of them, you'll get the hang of them and kind of figure out what you like and what you don't like. Um, material wise, there's not too much in it. Um, first off, off the back, we're just using a, a saddle feathers. So I'm using a, a lavender and a white. For flash, again off the back of the fly is the tail, I'm going to use um, a pearl straight flash and also a, a crystal flash and pearl as well. I have, for the body, basically just a, a small bit of, um, again, pearl dubbing flash essentially. So what I'm going to be using today is a, a foxy tails and it is an optic fiber in pearl opal. Bucktail is going to make up the majority of the front of the fly. The one here in front of us is a white with a lavender and an olive back. Uh, the one I'm going to tie is a little bit different, so I'm going to be using a white for the belly and then I'm going to be doing a um, lavender and a claret uh, blend basically on the back of the fly. Um, then it's a little bit of peacock curl, so three or four strands of peacock curl, which are basically tied in at the front of the fly and running back the length of it. And for the eyes is jungle cock. Um, now I'm going to be using a synthetic jungle cock today. I've just got these to try them out, um, see how they look. They seem to be... Um, they seem to look quite nice um, and they should last a lot longer and kind of keep their shape uh, a lot better than the, than the naturals. Um, and then the tread is going to be a GSP. I'm going to be using a 30 denier basically because I want a, a really, really thin tread uh, to try and cut down the, the volume of the head um, of the fly. Um, so I'm just going to write down to a really fine tread, but these GSPs are still very strong um, and they'll cope no problem with tying the, the rest of the fly. Now, so we'll uh, just remove this um, from the vise and we'll replace with a hook and get started. Now, so we'll just start to thread off the eye hook and run back to the bend. And we're gonna start off by putting in a, tying in basically a small bunch of bucktail and it's just to support the wing of the fly, to help stop it fouling, um, and obviously it'll add a bit to the to profile as well. So when we're taking our bucktail, you want to take your bucktail from kind of further up the tail because the fibers down near the base are very hollow. Um, and when we tie this in, we don't really want to display too much. We want it to sit, um, sit fairly flush back from the, the bend of the hook. So get your clump. Just going to remove any of the short fibers. Have a little look. Any twisted fibers. Or fibers that aren't sitting right. Take them out. And have a little look. If you want to stack the bucktail, you can restack it um, to line up the tips a bit better. This one's pretty okay. You want a little bit of a taper here just to try and keep the fly looking natural. So once you're happy, Remove the, the ends, just to square them up. Catch it straight off the back. And basically your turns near the, the back of the bucktail, you want them nice and nice and loose to stop it from splaying. Um, and once you run your tread further up towards the butt ends, you can start to put pressure on, um, which will lock in the, the butt ends of the bucktail. So as you, as you run back, just leave off a little bit of the pressure. Make sure that these bucktails sit flush on the back. You can have one or two twisted fibers here. I'll just remove them quickly. Now we're then going to add our feather. So you take your longest feather, in my case it's going to be the white one. Line it basically with the, the underneath of the feather facing down. 
off it to the hook and have a look at where you want it to, to sit, how far back you want it to hang. Once you're happy, I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the, the fibers from each side of the shaft of the feather. Make it less bulky when it's been tied in. Off it to the top of the hook and just gently catch it in with a, a couple of turns to start with. Make sure it's sitting nice and even straight over the back of the hook. And again, take your time with this because if this doesn't sit square off the back, it's gonna make the rest of the fly a lot more difficult to tie. And it's gonna make it very difficult to get the proportions right. Now, so once you're happy, again, start to crank down, apply the pressure to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Have a double check, make sure everything is nice and square. Sitting right. Remove the waist and then we're gonna get our next feather. So I'm going with my lavender. And again, I'm just gonna offer it up, have a little look at where it's gonna sit. Again, the underneath of the feather is facing down. I'm gonna leave in the, the fibers on this feather. I'm not gonna clean off the shaft of it because I basically want a little bit more bulk um, to help with tying it down because you're tying basically a flat feather shaft on top of another flat feather shaft. You're gonna to want to slide over and sit each side and you'll get the feathers to kink and twist. Um, but if you leave extra fibers on, um, it adds a little bit more bulk and generally I find it makes it a lot easier to, to keep the feather in situ and in, in the right place. So again, once you're happy where it's sitting, you can start to get a few extra turns in, crank down the pressure and get this area all tidied up. Have a, another look and just make sure they're all sitting where you want them to be. And then we're just going to run back a little bit of our flash. Um, so again, use as much or as little as you like. Obviously use whatever types of flash you fancy. I'm just going to run as I said, one of the, the crystal flash in pearl and just a straight pearl flash as well. I'm going to catch the two fibers in the middle and on one side. Get two or three turns in just to hold them, double the fibers over to the other side. Hold them on each side of the stacks and just run your thread back, locking them in. Then you can look at the fibers, you can come in and trim them to length. Now, so just to tidy up this little area here at the back of the fly, you really don't need to do it. Um, the fish aren't going to mind, but just to tidy it up and make it look a bit nicer, I'm going to put a tiny, tiny little bit of our flash dub onto the tread, and I'm literally just going to get one or two turns in right here at the back. And that's just going to bridge the gap between our next stack of bucktail. So to even up the fly and make sure the back of the fly has as much bulk as, as the belly, I'm going to add a little bit of our lavender bucktail in. So just like with the, the white, we're going to take material from up near the top of the, the bucktail. Just because we don't want that hollow material. Clean up all the ends. Have a little look and make sure to, the fibers are pretty uniform. I'm going to stack this one. This isn't as nice as the white. Realign the tips. Have a little look. And then once you're happy, offer it to the fly, have a look and make sure that you, you don't have too much bulk. When you're tying these flies at the start, you always overdress them. So if you're, if you're ever kind of nervous, remove a little bit more fiber if you're unsure, because in general you're gonna have a little bit too much. So I'll get rid of a little bit of that fiber, offer back up again, and I'm gonna keep the tips of these basically matching with the, the white bucktail underneath. So grab these fibers, lock them in on top with a tight turn, 
and then as we start to walk the tread back we're going to start loosening off the, the tread turns just to make sure this bucktail doesn't splay too much Remove all of the, the excess and all your waste. Now I'm just gonna quickly run down, tidying up all these tag ends. I'm just building a little bit more of a base of tread underneath. Run your tread back, um, and then just grab another little bit of your dubbing to tidy up the body on your way up. Now, as I say, you can leave this as white tread. You can use um, a mylar tinsel or dubbing to, to cover this up, whatever's your fancy. So just get a couple of turns in. And I'm gonna keep this nice and picky. I want this dubbing on a nice and loose as you fish it. These fibers are going to get pulled out, it'll bleed back into the wing um, and just add to the add to, to the flash of the fly. That's kind of why I like using this rather than a, a mylar or tinsel. And then just as you get close to the front, what I'll generally do is Add a lot less material um, because I don't want it as bulky. Um, if you have a lot of bulk near the head, it's gonna stop your fibers from basically lying down um, and collapsing and getting a nice kind of streamlined profile that you're looking for with this fly. So you'll see the, the material kind of builds and then runs flat along the body, um, which means once we tie our stacks in here at the front, they'll actually be able to collapse once the water hits them. Now, so we're nearly there. Again, we're gonna get a little bit of our white bucktail. Same again, we're gonna stay near the, near the tip of the tail. Take off a pinch. Remove all of our excess and short fibers and any broken or twisted fibers. Have a look, we might just stack this a little bit. Have a look and again try and gauge the amount of material you're, you're using. You have to tie a few of these flies to, to get your eye in. And generally I'll go when I when I'm tying this stack in. I want it obviously to be to end up a lot shorter than the first stacks to, to build a taper. So the first stacks are in and around say this this length. So obviously when I tie it forward they're going to be coming that much short. Um, and I'm gonna go maybe a touch short and that even again. Um, to about there, and that looks looks about right for me. So what I'm gonna do is just catch these fibers in. Catch them kind of the, the center of the gap that we've left ourselves, pull tight, just to make sure these are really well locked in. And then slowly start to work our tread back. Again, loosening the pressure to tread turns as we as we run back to fly and you'll see it stops the, the fibre from kicking kicking out too much um, and building a kind of an unnatural profile. Split the fibres down the centre. So we have a, a few each side of the hook. And then without cutting your tread, you want to come in here and start cleaning up all of these tag ends of bucktail. Take your time, try and do a nice tidy job of it um, and it'll really help with the, the profile of the head at the end. It's pretty 
really good. Um, and then we have to get our lavender. So I'm gonna, as I said, at the start, blend the fibers um, on the back. So I'm gonna start with our lavender. It's gonna be the majority of the, the coloration on the back. So I'll take quite a decent clump of this, clean it off as per usual, have a little look and see if it needs to be stacked. Realigned. Leave this down on your table. And then I'm gonna get my claret bucked out. And same again, so look for the straightest fibers and fibers near the end of the bucktail. Remove them. Very same process. So clean them out. Restack them. Have a little look. And then we're going to drop them straight onto our lavender clump. And then when we have our two clumps of bucktail, grab them by the tips, pinch, spin and just comb out. Catch them by the other side, comb this way, grab them by the tips again, pinch and spin, give them a little comb. And nice and quick, you'll have a nice blended clump of bucktail. Now I have way, way too much fibers here. So I'll offer them up and just have a look. Just try and gauge it. I'm gonna pretty much nearly split these and just clump in half. Have a look, I'm pretty happy with that. So gauge the, the length of the white bucktail underneath. That gets caught on top. Catch it in, making sure all of your material stays on top. Apply the pressure just to get the bucktail locked and then I'll slowly start running this thread back. And just leave it slowly, work its way up and start to catch in the fibers. Now, trim up all the, the tag ends again. Tidy up the head of the fly. And then we're gonna add our peacock grove straight off the back. So I'm just gonna get three strands of a uh, peacock curl. Line up the tips and line them up with the, the tail of the fly around here. I'll hold them and catch them straight in on top. Get a few turns in to make sure they stay and then just have a look and make sure that they are definitely running right along the top of the fly. Then I'm going to run the tread down a little bit, down the head. Keeping the tread tight, I should be able to break all of these off. That's the, the best way you get a nice kind of flush cut on those fibers. Run your tread back up and then at this point you can either whip finish and put on your epoxy eyes. Um, you can leave the fly without eyes. Um, or as tie in your jungle cock. So, as I said, I'm experimenting with these synthetic jungle cock uh, pieces. So, I'm going to tear two of them off. They have a, a sticky back. 
they actually do seem to be quite easy to tie on. Off them to the fly, see where you where you're gonna want them. No belts here. Get a few tight turns in. Make sure it's all sitting okay. Get your other one. And tie straight in the other side of the fly. Again, get a few tight turns in to make sure that these won't move. Have a double check, make sure they're both sitting at the same position on the flight. They're pretty good. Remove the tags. And then just start running your tread towards the front. Clean up any of the ends and covering over all the, the fibers and the ends of the eyes. Make sure to give it a, a nice profile. And then it's just a case of whip finishing here at this point. So. few turns in, put a second one in, trim the waist and just add a small drop of super glue um, and this will just soak into the fibres of the tread and I'll make sure just to stop anything from unraveling. Once this goes off, I'll put a little coat of um, varnish over the tread turns. Um, and then this fly obviously looks a little bit messy um, and bulky, it's natural material. So it's not always gonna sit perfect um, when you first put it on the hook. So once that varnish has gone off, I'll basically run it under the tap, um, get these fibers to behave and leave it dry off and then I'll meet you back up here to show you the finished fly. Now, so it's had a chance to dry off after its swim and you'll see it gives a much nicer profile to the fly. It gets everything kind of behaving and sitting back where it should. Um, you'll see we have a nice kind of bulky head on the fly, um, which will break the water and basically cause a little bit of a wake um, and turbulence behind it, which will get this tail um, kicking and moving basically in the current and on the retrieve. Um, so it's a really nice sand eel and general bait fish pattern. Um, can be tied loads of different ways, tied slightly bulkier, um, adding extra feathers in and things like that to suit yourself um, and to kind of make them your own. But this is just a nice simple one that I found works quite well, especially for the size of fish that we're targeting here um, on the Irish shores. Now, as always, we're going to be giving this fly away. So if you'd like to enter, um, just make sure you're subscribed to us. Give the video a like and leave a comment letting us know what species of fish you'd like to target with this fly. Um, and a week after this video airs, uh, we'll pick someone from the comment section and we'll get this fly then sent out to them. So that's it. Thanks very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do like and subscribe.